Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new keyboard from Kidos. On Kidos, Kidos is the one that brought us the original NJ80, a keyboard that's probably one of, if not the most sold, 75% keyboards in the last few years. Um, yes, a couple of companies took it up and changed the name of it, but it was a Pretty solid, easily moddable, 75% with a knob that for a while it seemed like not only did everyone have one, many people had more than one. Or maybe I'm just trying to make up for myself because I had, I have way more than one. I probably have 10. <laughs> They're not all key duos. There are other brands as well because sometimes, hey, you want to review this keyboard? Yeah, sure. They get it out to me and it'd be like, it's just an NJ80. Anyway, one of my favorite keyboards is the NJ80 Plus or Pro. I forget which one. I don't have it here at the moment, um, but it is a an aluminum keyboard that has both a foldable screen and a knob. So the knob can be folded out or in and the screen can also come up at an angle or just fold all the way back it's just to me it's one of the neatest keyboards um anytime i take it out with me and you know say i'm working at the airport or a coffee shop or whatever um without fail someone will come up to me and be like um is that the screen on your keyboard like people just out of nowhere i literally at one point actually had like a group of people crowd around as I started to talk about keyboards and I brought up my YouTube channel and people were just like, you know, they were taking turns like clicking on the keyboard and they were like, oh, wow, you have a screen and, you know, a knob while well, you could control your volume with it. And it was like, it was funny because I was almost kind of like doing a sales demonstration in the middle of a coffee shop and it wasn't even a Starbucks. It was like a local mom and pop coffee shop but um in the end there was like probably like eight nine people around me and they were all like taking down notes so <laughs> it's just funny because there's still a lot of people that just don't know the difference between a regular membrane keyboard and a mechanical keyboard some people will never care some people they're gonna be like oh especially those that use a keyboard every day <laughs> and i mean yes i know a lot is being done on mobile nowadays but Many people still sit down at a computer every day to do work. And when you're dealing with a mechanical keyboard, you have the ability to customize the keyboard to you so that the experience is unique. And the aim is to be as productive as you can be and with a minimal or no pain, you know, repetitive injury damage um, and enjoy using the keyboard at the same time. I mean, I code, I love coding. So the keyboard by extension, as it's, you know, the tool that I need to code. I mean, granted, I could, that'd be so weird. I guess I could voice dictate code, but it just wouldn't be the same. And I guarantee you, I would not be as productive as I can be with a keyboard. And I can actually just run a debug command, just run that line, you know, work out a logic of algorithms that I'm building as I'm going through. So sorry to go off into the weeds like that but today we're taking a look at a new version of their nj68 which is their 65 percent um it, it, like i said i reviewed the pro or the plus version the one with the screen on the knob but not the original version that was one of their first keyboards if i'm not mistaken but, but the difference with this nj68 is that it's a hall effect keyboard so it's one of the newer entrance almost every manufacturer now has a hall effect keyboard i'm collecting as many as i can so that i can do a comparison video here in the near future because um manufacturing wise the cost is really only a couple of dollars more at the most five dollars more um for a hall effect keyboard over a mechanical keyboard and in some instances it can actually be the same or a little bit cheaper depending on the components they have chosen now granted I am doing this estimation or guesstimation based on what I can see the parts for listed on AliExpress. Bulk pricing obviously is going to be different, different, but I'm going to assume that it's probably going to be much more um, beneficial for the manufacturers. Anyway, 
So today we're taking a look at the NJ68. I do believe, yes, we have a brass plate and it is a smoky black body with a dark front. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at Kiduos' NJ68. I want to say this is their third um, Hall Effect keyboard because I've reviewed the NJ80 Hall Effect. I've reviewed the NJ98 Hall Effect. I believe that was a Hall Effect. Crazy. But now I'm reviewing this one. I, I, I'll have to come back to that one. But I believe it's either their second or their third. I'm pretty sure it went their third. All right, so before taking a look at the keyboard, I'd like to see what's included in the box. We have a key, key duos, um, I'm gonna say QAQC certificate, uh, given the time and the date when this was inspected. Looks like it was uh, June 13th of this year, so not too long ago. We have a basic user manual telling us all the different effects that we have, Bluetooth pairing and RGB controls. We have a standard wire switch and keycap puller. We have a standard rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable. And we have a 2.4 dongle. Unfortunately, it is not labeled Key Duos. I will have to pull out my white marker and make sure to correct that. And here we are with the Key Duos NJ68 CP or Hall Effect magnetic keyboard. Now, thankfully, they do include a dust cover, which like I I say, and sometimes maybe people say I say too much, but if you put this and leave this on your keyboard when not in use, you're going to get the longest lifetime out of it. It's just going to protect the keyboard from all that dust and grime that we have floating in the air around us. And, but I want to thank Key Duos for including this. Very important. I think it's very thank... I, I just want to thank Kiduos for being another one of the manufacturers that is thoughtful enough to include a dust cover, which can help extend the life of your keyboard. So here we are. We see that we do have a smoky, translucent um, body. Now, I know there's some people out there that are like, ah, smoky or translucent. I don't know. I kind of like it. I kind of like to see the interior. Um, so there we can actually see it looks like the daughter board no maybe that's hmm it doesn't look like a cable it looks like we do have some sort of foam in there we have one set of fold out feet for two typing angles on the back we have a port all right so oh and there's the i don't know how i missed that there's the on and off switch we can go ahead and turn it on real quick Ooh, look at those lovely RGBs. All right, so it looks like it's trying to pair right away. We have a standard 65% layout without a blocker. So we've got the uh, the one U modifiers on the on the right of the um, space bar. But yeah, this is a very standard 65% uh, layout. Now let's see what we've got under the keys. So for keycaps, it does look like we have what I would assume to be ABS double shot shine through. Um, let's see what the thickness of the body on these keys are. Wow, 1.4, that's only one layer because the, the top of the shine through is only at the top. This is the body, so it's a singular 1.4 millimeters, which is not bad, especially for a single layer key. Now below that, we see that we have a pretty and pink switch. Looks like a cream housing with a pink dustproof stem. And of course it's linear as all magnetic switches are. No ping. It has a nice soft bottom out. It's not sharp or loud at all. It's audible, it's not quiet, but it's not loud. So below that we see that we have some plate mounted stabilizer. Go ahead and take a look at these. And they are nicely lubricated. This material feels different. Huh. They're lubricated in the right spots, but they're not overly lubricated. It's good to see. And on the PCB, it looks like we have north facing PCB with SMD LEDs. 
and it does not appear like we have any room for screw and stabilizers but we do have a brass plate um i want to say the first time first time i saw a brass plate was on a th80 um and I, I was surprised at how well it sounded so we've got a brass plate on a 60 percent keyboard now these plate mounted stabilizers are actually they feel different but one thing that I can say is they're well attached. The tolerances are just well matched and these plate stabilizers are not going anywhere. The uh, switch definitely has a lighter spring to it as most will, um, but in the software we'll be able to set up the, um, the point of actuation and thankfully um, if this is like the other key duos keyboard that's one piece of software that is for controlling all of them uh, these keycaps are in the oem profile i don't know if i had mentioned that but yeah they're oem they are shine through they have a gray gradient so it sounds like a fairly standard keyboard um i can't say i've encountered a out of the box sounds amazing uh he keyboard yet some of them sound a little bit better than others uh, but this one is very close to it and they added a um a pet layer above the pcb and perhaps some different dampening down below because i don't know what is actually i did want to take a look at that but yeah because we don't have a hole we can't see what's down below. It feels dense enough, but in my opinion, it could use a little bit more depth. It sounds a little clackier. That makes any sense, though, for a lot of people, clackier is going to be just fine. But this uh, space bar. This definitely could be tuned. Now, it does look like it has... No. It has some foam between the plate and the PCB. And it has the IXPE layer. But there's no strip. I think that this particular stabilizer needs to be tuned. Although, I may replace the wire when I come back to it. I will come back to this keyboard at some point, And I, I want to make it sing. Um, but... For what we've got right here, we have a decent looking 65%. We have a USB port. We have three mode. We have a Hall Effect magnetic keyboard that's going to, I mean, if you're a gamer, this is what, I mean, especially those high frame rate games, this is what's going to, not necessarily, it's not like steroids, but it's just gonna give you the best tools so that you can respond as quickly as possible. Though, um, you know, the, the ha being able to just press a key, hold it down and have it, you know, just continue to fire. I think that's a pretty cool feature. Like I said, I don't game much anymore. My, my game is coding lines. <laughs> so, um, for, what, for what it's worth, we have a decent 65%. We have a, um, I want to say it's sandwich mounted, but... Uh, yeah. Let me see. If it's not too tight. All right. Telling you these plastic spudgers. <laughs> I use them not only for keyboards, but for everything. I use these at least a couple times a day. They are so handy. They're just really handy. And I think you can get a bag... 50 for like eight bucks six bucks on amazon something like that i'll put a link down below if i can remember all right so we can see that we have a clear i guess it's probably an, a polycarbonate case that is the top then we have let's see is this okay pull out oh, okay so this is a uh, It's not 
ah, it's kind of a hybrid sandwich tray mount because we've got these studs basically that that are making sure the plate doesn't fall through though the plate's kind of held between both the bottom and the top case so um now this is a design I know that they've used and it's worked for them, but it's just, we're at a point that gasket mounted is almost the industry standard, but taking into consideration that most of the other HE keyboards that are currently available in stock are also tray mount and you know not true gasket mount then they're being competitive in that particular segment will that change i absolutely believe that's going to change very soon and it's going to be gasket mounted and it's going to be hi-fi layers but right now because it's kind of a new thing they're just kind of rolling back some features i guess and starting from a more base kind of layer i mean i will say that i know this is more geared towards gaming so it's probably different when it comes to coding. A gasket mount makes all the difference when I'm coding for hours upon hours. So we do have what feels like a single poron sheet down below. And we have a 3100 milliamp hour battery. Um, I'm glad that it has a date on it. Uh, Kidos is actually pretty good, I've noticed, for their battery life. Um, even on smaller batteries, their wireless lifetime, actually. Just because a battery has a certain capacity doesn't mean it's going to last longer or, you know, less than, you know, another battery in another device. Because devices can use power differently. Some can, you know, sip it tiny little sips some can just guzzle it down like there's no tomorrow so i've seen with key duos keyboards uh is one of the brands that i've seen rk being the other that for some reason they're able to put smaller batteries in and make them last for a long long time um we can see that we've got a total of six screws holding the plate and the pcb assembly together um, we do have a nice thick cable and JST connector going to the battery. And here's the switch, which we want to be careful of inserting through the hole properly to make sure we don't damage it. All right. oh. We also want to make sure that we're going into the port. So we got to go at an angle for the USB port and then... We want to make sure that this switch is lined up. All right, it looks like it's in and it's working. All right, so keeping it together, latch the back first and then the front. Okay, oh, we gotta make sure we catch those lips. There we go. All right, so all in all, we have a pretty standard 68. T65% Hall Effect Magnetic Keyboard. Just the specs. Today we took a look at the Key Duos NJ68 CP-HE. A three-mode 68 T65% Hall Effect Keyboard. It has a standard 65% layout without a blocker. It comes with adjustable actuation, dynamic keystroke, and rapid trigger as a north facing Hall Effect PCB without screw in stabilizer support. It is a hybrid sandwich tray mount brass plate preloaded with Otemu magnetic pink switches and shine through OEM profile keycaps. Keyboard comes weighing it at 804 grams, while the battery of this keyboard has a capacity of 3100 milliamp hours. The chin of this keyboard sits at 21 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 27 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. Folding out the set of included feet will take the back height to 37.5 millimeters and the angle of typing to 13 degrees. This keyboard MSRP is for $89.99 and is available on Keydoos' website. Links below.
All right, so as I mentioned earlier, for the software, we use the same software for all the different KeyDuos model keyboards. So I already had it installed, but you can go to keyduos.com and download it yourself. Um, so we see that we have settings we can do per key settings with the calibration of where it's going to actuate or we can do it for all the buttons to do it for all the buttons you have to go into the customize section but you can set where it's going to actuate and where it's going to release that actuation so we also have the ability to do the sensitivity and there is a preset gaming mode that from what I understand is the best settings if you're going to be gaming and you want it to be as fast as it can be. In the main section, we see that we have the top layer or what you see, and we have a function layer. When hitting the function layer, you can go to the keys that are already pre-mapped and either, you know, remap them or keep them as you, as they are as they come. Um, if you need a key that's not showing up, you just hit the little keyboard uh, in that right hand box and it'll bring up an entire keyboard so you can select the key that you want to map either the top layer or the function layer key to. In the lighting section, you can select from one of the predefined um, models as they call them or effects, or you can select static light customization which will allow you to do a per key RGB. You're able to save those per key RGBs. And if you so should choose, they have an online account where you can sign up and share your macros, your lighting settings, your effects, your per key RGBs um, before their different models. There's a few different um, closed source softwares that have been adding this feature. We have a pretty basic macro editor um, where you can add new macros. And again, you can also share them or download macros that other people have created. Those you don't need an account to download preset or re pre-created macros. And then we have our settings page. Uh, we, when I came to this page, there was both a red dot under the click update and upgrade firmware. So I updated the software first. It restarted and then when it came back up I updated the firmware on the keyboard it took about a minute and a half keyboard rebooted a couple of times it um, driver didn't detect it then it redetected and everything is back I haven't noticed any difference between pre and post firmware update obviously when you do an update do make sure that you're either on a laptop with a fully charged battery or that you're using a a UPS or some sort of uninterruptible power supply, losing power um, or disconnecting the keyboard or the device while in during a firmware update is, a, is very likely to break your device. So we have a decent 65%. I mean, yes, it's a sandwich mount hybrid tray mount, which I would have preferred something a little bit softer, but at least we have a brass plate. Um, it sounds okay-ish out of the box stock but it's something that i think we can make sound much better um from what i can see it has all the features that other name brand magnetic keyboards have they might have different names for the feature but the description of the feature basically sounds the same and this is roughly half the price of what the most popular one out there is so i don't I don't think that one offers anything different. And I know that one's not gasket mounted as well. So this is, in my opinion, a better value. It comes from a keyboard company that has been around for a while. Um, they've been delivering good keyboards. Like I said, the, <laughs> the NJ80 uh, became not only one that was white labeled, but was copied on many different levels and is still sold to this day, um, obviously, at a much cheaper rate the market has definitely changed but they're a company that have always stood by behind their products um anytime well only two times i had an issue one was an outside cause and the other time was just bad luck but both of those times they were so responsive and that's actually how we built the relationship when i started reviewing keyboards more 
they were like, would you like to review this one? And they just offered. It was kind of more of a natural relationship that came out from open discussion, from them treating me instead of like just another number, they treated me like a human being, which has been rare for the most part. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some good, good companies out there, uh, but some, you know, I'm everybody, whether you're a customer, you're, you know, doing, doing reviews of their products, whatever, you're just another number to them. And it's just move more units, move more units. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of this keyboard. I will be coming back to it um, at least once, but probably twice. Once when I do my lineup of all the HE um, budget, more affordable keyboards that, that I have that have come out in the last few months. Um, and then I want to do a mod and see how good I can make this sound because I'm very confident I can make this sound much better than it does out of the box. Um, if you have any comments, any questions, any suggestions for anything you'd like to see me do when I come back to this keyboard, please let me know down in the comments below. Hitting the thumbs up or hitting the subscribe button really goes a long way. But I want to wish you beautiful people an awesome rest of your day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.